So, uh, let's begin our talk of the YCS with Thursday. So, in the lead up to Thursday, uh, preceding the 250th YCS in London, I am very stressed. And that's because I have a shitload of videos basically to make in the span of a day. And I got most of them. And uh, unfortunately, you'll notice that I didn't put up a short yesterday. And I didn't put up uh, the uh, Twitter thread uh, today yet. That's because Dyer was trapped in LAX for 25 hours. That's another story for another time. Uh, but I got most of them done. I was ready to go, but I was like, bah, 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 bah. I was going. So um, I, I wake up at like 7 a.m. I go to school. The way my school schedule works, I have all my classes on one day because I go part time and I am a genius when it comes to scheduling. I'm not to toot my own horn. I'm really good at scheduling uh, classes. Uh, so I have them all in one day. I roll through them all at about six. I get in my car to go to uh, the airport where we have a plane that's taking off at 10, right? Uh, PM. This is on Wednesday, actually. Uh, and as we are on the plane, Trump gets arrested. Okay, bullshit, by the way. We talked about it earlier, but what the f what am I? His fucking phylactery? Not fair. Um, but uh, we flew United, which if you've never done before, let me just recommend right now that you do not do that shit. Uh, I'm going to send United the email that white people send after uh, flying on a plane. If you're not white, uh, you may not be familiar with this, but uh, let me... Um, just uh, advocate for this practice in case you've never heard of it. If you go on a plane and it's uncomfortable, just send a message to the airline and say, this shit sucked, dog, and they will give you stuff. They will give you free stuff. They'll say, I'm sorry, you know, it wasn't up to snuff. Maybe, you know, throw in a veiled hint that maybe there's a legal threat and and they will just give you stuff they constantly and That's it's like you always get it legend. because the plane is always bad there is not a comfortable flight in the united states thanks reagan which of course was the airport that we flew out of anyway um i flew united uh the first thing about united that you need to know if you haven't already uh is that they require you to put in your middle initial when you are flying uh, you know, pretty standard stuff, except we have to go through customs because we're going to another country. Uh, and the way that United formats your name is there is not a space between your middle initial and your first name. So we've got a passport for Joseph and Jillian. However, our tickets say they are for, for Josephel and Jilliana. And we're like, fuck. So we get there way early. And we're just like, uh, hey, uh, is this going to be okay? And they're like, yes, it's fine. It's fine. It's going to be fine. And I'm like, okay, great to hear. And they're like, when are you coming back? And I'm like, oh, you know, uh, on Monday. And they go, oh, that's a problem. I go, what do you mean that's a problem? They're like, well, you're going to London. They're going to be striking. And I was like, are you fucking kidding me? They're striking? I'm like, can't you just like pay them? Are they going to fix it before then? And they were like, we'll see. And I was like, yeah, we'll see. All right, whatever. <clears throat> so we get on the plane and, you know, I, you know, yeah, I'm like, okay, I have stuff to do. I have to get some rest because uh, I've been up super late. Uh, I haven't gotten good sleep all week. I I'm excited to fall asleep on the plane. Have you ever fallen asleep on a plane? That shit is impossible. Plane was uncomfortable. So I was like, well, at least I can get some videos done. Uh, there's power in between the seats is what United tells you. I have yet to be on a United flight where the power in between the seats works. Uh, they have Wi-Fi. I'm like, well, I can use the two hours of fucking battery my laptop has in order to get something done, I guess. And um, I, I purchased Wi-Fi $32.99 for the Wi-Fi, by the way. $32.99 for one device. So I get on the Wi-Fi, and guess what, bitch? Their Wi-Fi does not permit you to stream video. I don't mean that in the sense that it will prevent you from loading a YouTube page. It will literally not permit you to go to YouTube, which prevents me from making changes to my profile, checking uploads Vlad has scheduled, or uploading anything myself. So uh, that that's why I will be sending them a message. Just be a T-Mobile customer. Oh, yeah. By the way, Danny flew United as well, and he got his cock sucked on the plane because if you're a T-Mobile customer, they just give you whatever you want. Well, fuck you. I went to Verizon, as you can all see in my previous video where I talk about how I'm going to destroy the United States government because Verizon doesn't work. This fucking nation. Oh, my God. It's just it's 
it's we are just doing feudalism again. Capitalism is clearly collapsing before our eyes. And instead of, uh, you know, moving to something better, uh, you know, the fucking fully automated luxury space communism that, you know, 14 year olds on Twitter are always talking about. We are just moving back to fucking fiefs. We are going all the way back to feudalism. And Danny has allied himself with the Lord T-Mobile. And as a result, he gets to reap the benefit of United. And I go and they beat my ass for 14 hours. Anyway, we get on the plane um, and we land we go to the hotel so first thing i will say about britain um the tube all right that shit is really nice actually i wanted to talk shit on it it beats the fuck out of the mta i mean i i knew this already because uh i studied abroad in london but it's, it's only gotten better i expected to go back like when you go back to new york after like a decade of not being there it's degenerated more you know chamber street appears more close to the inevitable collapse that will just kill two thousand people on a you know busy friday morning uh, but uh the tube gets better you go back and it's cleaner there's more stops uh we took the elizabeth line which took us directly to the fucking convention center and our hotel uh we did you take the elizabeth line shit's fire we did it was lovely it was so nice anyway uh we go to our hotel and we go hey we're, we we got to get in and they're like oh we'll check in is until three i'm like oh okay sorry and then i go wait is this the ebus and they go no this is the noel and i go well, then you didn't have my hotel room at all, did you? You didn't even check. And so we walked over next door and we checked in. And uh, Danny and Rebecca were already there. Uh, Rebecca had just come in and Danny had actually been there a week because he came earlier for his birthday. So I text Danny and he's like, hey, do you want to come hang out with me and Rebecca? I said, I would love to. And then I fell asleep for nine hours. Um, <clears throat> that was a mistake. Uh, I woke up when I told him I would and Jillian was like, are you going to go with them? And I was like, I'm just going to text him. I was like, I'm fucking sorry, dog. It's not, it's not going to happen. Uh, and, uh, I, I woke up at like 11 PM and Jillian had got me Tika. And so I had like Tika in the fucking hotel and then I slept for another 15 hours. Now, first up, I hear a lot of shit that the British are always talking about, about how they have the best Tika in the world. Uh, obviously, the place we got was, you know, not like the greatest Tika in the city. It was very bad. I will say this with 100% certainty as someone who has had Tika maybe a dozen times in England. The, the average Tika in America exceeds the average Tika in England. Um, but the average American meal far exceeds the average English meal. So, you know, it's a, it's a scale thing for them. It's, it's, it's shocking. I'm sure you have really good Tika at the top of things, you know, but so do we, I mean, I don't think it's fair to compare the tops because I ain't eating that shit. I'm eating, you know, what's cheap. Anyway, Tikka Masala is not real Indian food, by the way. Yeah, I know. I don't give a fuck. It's good. <laughs> anyway. Um, so I wake up, uh, there's a place across That's the street that does full English legend. breakfast. I go, I, you know, it's by the convention center. I bet it's tourist garbage, but whatever, I'll have it. We go there, we go, uh, can we get a full English? And I'm in a weird position because I don't eat red meat, right? And so I'm like, ah, you know, I want a full English, but I can't eat like a third of it. And I'm like, you know, maybe I'll break it for the trip. And so I, I say to the guy, I'm like, yeah, I don't eat red meat. And he goes, oh, just get the halal one. And I was like, Sorry? He's like, yeah, so what we do now is we do a halal English breakfast. And I was like, what's that? He was like, oh, it's uh, chicken, sausage, and turkey bacon. And I go, oh? And I had it. It's great. It was it was wonderful. And I, I am just... And every place we went had a halal option. And listen, I'm not trying to say nothing. It really sucks that in America, we th we fucking hate Muslims. We are legitimately, we are insanely racist against Muslims because this nation would be so much better if every restaurant just had a halal option. Like, it would just be so, so good. It's so, it, I, every place we went, I was like, oh boy, they, this one has chicken instead of beef. That's it was like so nice. Oh. Don't worry, the UK is pretty racist against Muslims too. Well, at least they have halal options, you know? Racism is bad because it limits my food options. That's not the only reason racism's bad, but it's one of them. I'm sorry. I apologize. Anyway, uh, so after I eat the food, oh, I will say real quick, the bean part of the full English breakfast, terrible. Um, 
I don't know what's wrong with all of your beans. Your beans don't taste like beans. They taste like sugar. Are you putting sugar in your beans? What the fuck? I like in America, beans aren't sweet. We don't we don't do that. It was it's crazy. It's literally Heinz. We don't have Heinz beans. Heinz makes the worst ketchup in our nation and a pretty good mustard that doesn't compare to French's. That's incredible. Anyway, we go to the event space. This is the uh, XL event space, um, a division of Abu Dhabi uh, Foreign Investments or something. Holy fuck. It's nice. Folks, it's really nice. I mean, it has a lot to do with what EU uh, Yu-Gi-Oh is willing to pay for. In America, we will rent out the shittiest, least used, least accessible space and put like 400 people over capacity there. In EU, they shell it the fuck out. It is enormous. It's an incredibly large space and it is right next to 15 different food places, including two of the same coffee bar with good coffee. I was so afraid I wouldn't be able to find any in Europe, but uh, Costa, I think it's called. Actually, I, I, is it your guys' Starbucks? It was not bad. It was not terrible. That's why you're a legend. Oh, man. It was nice. I loved it a lot. Um, so I, I go in, and there are 3,000 people in the conference room. And I go, oh, fuck. And they're all sitting and chilling. And Farfa is uh, working the uh, the caster desk. We had planned to all go out to eat with Farfa afterwards. It becomes clear after about 20 minutes that is not going to happen. They are all way behind. He calls me over. He's like, hey, can we get you to record a deck profile? And I was like, of course. Uh, that deck profile is during the day two coverage. And you'll see a super cut of it and some other stuff that I did on my channel tomorrow. But... Um, uh, me and I meet up with Crush Cards and Danny and uh, Rebecca at that time, uh, and uh, we are all just chilling. And moments after getting into the venue, a queue forms that's about ninety fucking people long, and I'm just shocked. Basically, every place I went at this event. Within seconds, a queue of 15 to 100 people would form uh, for people trying to get signatures or photos or hugs. It was crazy. Um, I, I got to say, uh, I really appreciate it. <laughs> it, was, it, was, it was jarring, but it was a lot of fun. It was... It was so, it, it was, it was shocking. Um, I am obviously mobbed when I go to NAYCSs, uh, but at this point, since I've been to like four of them, I probably sign, I would say maybe like 250 things over the course of the event, maybe like 10, 15 people after every round are like, Hey, what's up? This was literally from the time I stepped in until the time I stepped out on Sunday, Someone was getting me to do something at every single second. I probably took like over a thousand pictures, signed over 2000 cards. I, I met at least 10% of my fucking viewer base. It was unbelievable. And I understand like I'm not going to be in the UK again for a while, I'm sure. And it, it was just, oh, it was magical. It was incredible. Uh, but we got this queue going. Danny's like squirting hand sanitizer directly into my mouth. Uh, I got to meet uh, Farfa. Um, I got to meet the EU uh, casters. Uh, they were lovely. I Real quick, a side note on the EU casters. Oh my fucking God. We are getting dabbed on in NA. We are getting nanade on. These people are so goddamn good at their job. It is frustrating. Uh, they were... Uh, energetic. They were engaged. They knew what they were talking about. They had insights, both as professional players and as individuals with a huge uh, breadth of information rather than a depth. Um, they uh, played Edison in between rounds. They played Goat in between rounds. Uh, they played Speed Duels in between rounds. They did trivia games. They did deck profiles. It was unfucking believable and they were all such a joy to be around. Every member of the EU casting team that I got to talk to, thank you so much for talking to me. You were all fantastic. Um, I also got to meet uh, uh, Lithium. I, I hadn't 
I had never met Lithium. This is weird. Um, I basically stole my entire channel from Lithium. Um, a lot of people are like, Joseph, your channel looks a lot like, and then they'll say someone who's not Lithium. Uh, that's just like a uh, an amusing coincidence. Basically, everything I did, I stole from Lithium. Um, and uh, he came up to me and he was like, is that Joseph Rothschild? And I was like, yeah. And we talked for, for a while. But every time Lithium and I got in the same location... Immediately, like people started trying to get us to do stuff and split us up. So they would be like, we'd be like talking and someone would be like, excuse me, who? Joseph, is this a bad time? And then inversely, lithium, is this a bad time? And like, we would, da, 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 da. eventually we got to have like a 10 minute conversation. It's a very nice down to earth guy. Uh, we talked about shit that was not Yu-Gi-Oh. It was very refreshing. Um, lithium, yo, he's the blueprint. I mean, he's got a loving family. He's got kids. Um, he loves Yu-Gi-Oh! And it's obviously, you know, a lot of his work. Um, but, uh, he's normal and someday I hope to be him. Um, but, uh, it was, it was nice to meet him. It was nice to see him. Um, I did not ask him to say that all important game three. Um, and I also, it, it is always strange meeting people like that. And because I don't want to come up to him and be like, hey, Lithium, you know, I I've got like 50K on you, but you're a huge inspiration. But like he literally is like the reason I started making videos is I was like, man, we need more people who are making content like this and less people that are making content like some other people that were making content at that time. Um, anyway, uh, also got to meet uh, Steb uh, and Haley. You all remember Haley from Twitter? Uh, she showed up, uh, Haley was so cool. Oh my God. We hung out with Haley pretty much the entire time. Oh my Lord. She was lovely. She was a joy to be around. She was, um, she was funny. Uh, she was engaged. Uh, she was really, you know, she played her fucking heart out and, um, it was, it was very nice. She, she was nice to have around. <laughs> okay. So day one continues. And I remember that I was supposed to do something with card market. So I hit up the card market guys. Uh, and two of the tiredest men I've ever seen in my life approach me. And I realize they have been up since last week. And um, so uh, I'm like, hey, are you guys all right? They're like, yeah, yeah, yeah. So we just need you to pull people in. And we'll do some videos where you ask them trivia questions. I retweeted that video. We did do it. I retweeted that video and it, it was very fun. But, um, uh, we, let me see if I can, unfortunately it's going to be out of order. It's this one right here. Yeah. God sends their most powerful memes to their greatest duelists. I was so fucking annoying during this. I could tell I was being annoying and I continued. I was I was so unbelievably annoying during this. We had it but we had a great time. Um and we we gave some people some uh some money. That was the the thing is they the the funniest one is I ask one person I'm like, "What the the progression playoff staple War Rock Mahmood, what's its typing?" And they go, "I don't know." And I'm like, "You don't know what the war rocks are it was unbelievable i was like how do you not know this but they did get it they did get it um <clears throat> so uh like i said after all this was over we had oh uh, so uh as we're leaving i'm like so what does everyone do everyone's just play testing today that's crazy three thousand people just to play test they go no you dumbass they're running events and i was like what and they're like yeah I go, it's Friday. And they go, uh-huh. And I go, oh. I didn't know that in EU, they run events on Friday. I mean, it makes sense. I don't know why we don't in NA. It's the perfect time for people to get in some last-minute testing. If they come to the event space early, they can kill some time playing Winamats. But no, um... We just don't run them on Friday. You just show up. On Friday in America, what you do is you show up at your earliest possible opportunity. You stand in a line to tell them you are there for the thing you already registered for. And then you go home. There is nothing else. You have to make that trip to do that and then go. 
Um, but in EU, they're like, play a 3v3. So uh, they're playing a 3v3, but the event space is only rented until 7 p.m. So Farfa is frantically filming the back end of the stuff that they have to get done for uh, for the mid-roll. And uh, the 3v3 is in round two. And 7 o'clock rolls around, That's and the 3v3 started legend. late. It was delayed for a number of reasons. And they have to call it two rounds before the end. It's not a 3v3 that plays out to one winner. It's a 3v3 that plays out to record. And then you get tickets based on your record was my understanding. So they gave people two buys. Crush Card sat down and did the math. Giving people two buys in an event that size with the prizing they did is like the equivalent of losing $15,000. <laughs> it was so funny. Uh, but uh, it was a lot of fun. Um... And, you know, I, I I got the impression that if you played a side event at this event, you would think that the event was very poorly run. The main deck ran fine. So uh, we had planned a dinner with Farfa. It wasn't in the cards. Uh, instead, uh, I think there's one over here. Yeah, there's me and Farfa. There's someone asking me to sign Synchro Cracker. Um, we, we went to an epic posters dinner. So this is uh, Rebecca, Steb, Haley, Jillian, Danny, and me. And um, we're having this dinner uh, real, real quick. Someone bought me a drink at this dinner. The very end of the dinner, the guy comes over and he goes, a rum and coke for you, sir. And I go, I didn't order a rum and coke. He goes, oh, it is a virgin rum and coke. And I go, I didn't order that shit. And he goes, oh, no, the table over, the, the one of the other tables did. And I was like, I will not be drinking this and then Haley said I'll drink it and she drank it so whatever um <laughs> sorry if you bought me that uh Haley downed it um <clears throat> but no what this was a great restaurant by the way it was it was by the venue um but it was not a lot of food you people in That's Britain like are unprepared for Americans we'll get to this in a second um but yeah that was the end of the day I go back uh, we actually stop at like a Tesco to get a bunch of stupid snicky snacks uh, because I'm still a little hungry. We got, they we had hamburger flavored Cheetos. Didn't know you had those. Uh, strawberry vanilla Oreos. We don't have that shit. Um, uh, Jaffa cakes. We don't have those shits. But you know what else we don't have? Paracetamol. We use ibuprofen in America. We don't have paracetamol. That shit is good. It's very good. I'm a big fan of pain medication. Anyway, um, <clears throat> so I go back to the uh, the uh, hotel room, and I haven't really gotten in to the hotel room yet. So the hotel is mostly populated by Yugists, um, and uh, I will say right now, um, it's small. The elevators are small, the rooms are small, the beds are small, the pillows are small, the toilets are very small. And that's the standard size for toilets in the UK. See, in the UK, they don't make things for big boys like me. You know what I'm talking about? Things are made for these these little 5'8 manlets who have subsisted off a diet of uh, vegan sausage rolls for their entire life. They don't have a toilet fit for... An ass like made mostly of burger. It's unbelievable. Um, so like I'm like fucking fumbling around like a giant in like a, a goblin's cavern. I'm like doing the like, like giant movements looking for gems and shit. Um, I'm, I'm sitting down on a toilet and like it, I, it technically creates a suction around my asshole. But my ass is not all the way on That's the seat. Like um it's unbelievable. It's, it's, it's strange. It's very odd. Um, the, the way that this nation is set up. Uh, so, I mean, I'm, 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 I was given that toilet the business. I'll tell you that buddy, the elf moment legitimately. So before I go to bed, I'm like, you know, I haven't hung out with any one of the streamer people really at all. So, uh, Doug is up and I'm, he, he's like, do you want to hang out? I'm like, sure. So I go down to the little like bar restaurant and I bring some cards and Doug's like, let's play test a bit. And I'm like, okay. Um, me and Doug play maybe the worst 
three or four games of Yu-Gi-Oh I've ever played in my life. He's on Lab. I'm on uh, Hero. And I'm just like this. I'm like zoned out. And Doug is like, this is how, when Doug gets tired, he goes like this. He goes. And we're just like, we just, and finally, at, at after like three games, we literally look at each other and we're like, I'm sorry, we have to go to bed. We're not getting anything out of this. And so we do. Um, that may have happened Thursday night, actually. And then Friday, I, I play tested with uh, Danny and Doug again, but we were more awake. Uh, Farfa was there too, but I feel bad I didn't really get to hang out with him um, in any sort of meaningful context that night. Okay, so... Uh, Day one of the event. I get in at 9.30 for a round that starts at 10. Um, the jet lag is kind of working in my favor here because I felt like I had to fall asleep at like the equivalent of like 2 p.m. American, which is like 10 p.m. there. And I fall the fuck asleep. I wake up perfectly on time. I walk over. I, I do the thing. So in America, we use paper. But over there, they have like an online system for registration and pairings. And I open it up and it's not working. And I go, uh-oh. And so I get in a big-ass line in order to uh, go. Or So I, I go to a judge. I'm like, hey, it's not working. They go, uh, go, go to the line for main event. So I go to the line for main event. And then I realize I'm in the second line for main event. There's a main line for main event that is maybe a thousand people deep. And um, I see Nash in the line. And I'm like, Nash, what's going on? And he's like, my thing doesn't work. And I'm like, me neither. Line's not moving. Nothing's getting resolved. And then we hear over the loudspeakers, we hear, duelists, round one has started. And I go, oh. And we just look at each other and we're like, no, it hasn't. Like, it has not. And uh, the people sitting down can see that there's a thousand people who haven't sat down yet. And they're just like, we're not playing. The The timer isn't going. Well, after about 10 minutes of this, judges start running down the aisles going, start, 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 start. And people are like, okay. And they start. And we in the line are like, uh, judge, what's going on? And they're like, do not worry. We have been told that we told they had judged. They are aware of the situation. You will not be DQ'd for time. And we go, okay. So they start handing out 20 minute extensions as the app starts working eventually. Uh, so um, I, I, I'm I like, all right, whatever. So uh, I I sit down uh, again across from a person. I'm like, ha, the app, right? I'm your round one opponent. He goes, no, you're not. And I go, huh? And he goes, yeah, no, you're Joseph, right? And I go, yeah. And he goes, I'm looking for Eric. And I'm like, here's the number. And he goes, oh no, I'm in the wrong seat. And he runs away. So I wait for about 10 more minutes. I call a judge. I go, hey, is my opponent going to show up? And he goes, no, you win. And I go, are you sure? Because I can see that there are people who still haven't sat down. He goes, no, you win. Are you? I'm like, That's again, I would be willing to wait for another 10 or 15 minutes. He's like, nope, you win. Just put in you win. Put you win. And I go, okay. And I put I win. Uh, so I won round one. Uh, I lost round two to Sprite. Uh, I considered just dropping at this point and fucking around London. Uh the uh the sprite player i was playing against very kind all my opponents all day were very normal i did not have one freak at all um and uh uh my opponent i think was just kind of confused as to what i was doing they were like why are you playing this i'm like ah you know i'm just here to have fun mostly um the, i i will say real quick um i did not expect sprite to be as dominant as it was at the uh, at the london event i was expecting uh sprite players to be like oh my god we have to up the ceiling we have to play the lima list on like tiny turtle and like toad setups and like adventure shit instead they were like i'm just gonna make red carrot every turn and it was crazy it was unbelievable um i i can't beat a deck that repeatable um it's just not in the cards so the a deck with that much access to non-engine uh, so I lost round two. I was like, I don't know. I got I to gotta drop. And then Farfa sends me a thing. And he's like, listen, I know you did the deck tech yesterday. I can probably get you on feature. I'm not back on feature until round six because they alternate with the other casting team. He's like, if you go 5-1 or 4-1 rather, I can get you on feature. And I go, 
Done. And so I went out from that position. I just go bop, bop, bop. And then I'm like, give me on feature, you stinker. And I do. And we sit down with my opponent. I'm like, hey, we're on feature. Um, let's uh, talk real quickly about the feature. Pull this up. Just a case of going. So uh, the feature is, if you haven't watched it, it's That's funny. It's funny for a number legend. of reasons. Number one, spoilers, I win. Oh, congratulations me. I'm playing against Runic Nachuria. The casters are not familiar with this matchup. Can't really fault them for it. Hero's not a particularly popular deck. Um, though, uh, we do get a lot of legend. really funny anecdotes from... Oh my god, I forgot his name. Marcello, right? Um, because uh, he lost in finals of, like, I think the German WCQ to this deck. Um, but uh, they don't really know how Wake Up Your E-Hero interacts with the deck, uh, what it really accomplishes, right? Um, and also they're like, oh, Dark Angel negates all the spells. It's an auto-win versus Runic Nachuria, which of course is not remotely true That's since they can fucking synchro legend. with it. As if it was a Link Summon, but he used the Enforcer to uh, just okay. pop itself. Greek Nats, right. It was Aki. No, it wasn't Aki. Uh, but, uh, you know, turn game one, I do this setup. Um, there's a weird position I get into where, like, That's I like give them the, uh, the Dark Angel and... Um, they are able to get enough monsters onto the field that they link it off for Dompa, right? And I book a monster that would allow them to have synchroed or at least use the Sunflower twice. I did this play under the assumption they didn't have room in the extra deck for Dompa. If I had been a little more uh, familiar with the matchup, instead I would have DPE'd to pop the um, uh, Sunflower and kept them on the uh, Dark Angel. I just like assumed they didn't have it and I could retain the DPE. Uh, but that's just that's just me. I should have known that shit. Uh, but we won. We won anyway, um, and uh, we won by. You can see right here, we did the coolest thing ever, which is activate infinite impermanence, and then later in the turn, uh, we are going to activate miracle fusion in the same uh, zone as impermanence. Uh, so um, I I went back and watched the uh, chat for when this happened. Um, I just want to say real quick. Uh, it's difficult playing under lights. It's like it was a lot of uh, pressure for both me and my opponent. We both fuck up stuff uh, over the course of this match. Um, I didn't catch it. My opponent didn't catch it. None of the judges watching caught it. And the casters didn't catch it. But boy, did Twitch chat catch it. They are literally in the chat going... MBT is a cheater. Of course you can win if you're cheating. You all understand this outcome is the same if I move that card over exactly one zone, right? This isn't me trying to misrepresent a game state in order to get one over on my opponent. It's not me doing an intent-oriented cheat to gain advantage. It's the pair of us operating in a high-stress environment over the course of a long turn and a blowout spell. No. All the comment is like, he's a fucking cheater. Execute him. Uh, um, I will say, though, he's not dead here. Uh, the casters don't really read Wake Up Your Elemental Hero. Uh, my opponent reads it, I think, incorrectly. He looks at it and he goes, okay, I scoop. And I go, all right. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Like, let me see if I can find it out. I feel you, Philip. I feel so plasma as well. So I, I'm describing uh, the attack yeah. on this well, thing and I go for the attack <laughs> of the Camellus. And he does, I, I think he's doing like math here. Yeah. yeah. Okay. And now then he's going to be like talking to himself. The attack monster, I believe. So that yeah. attacks. And he the goes, Camellia. all right, I concede. And, the, and you yeah. can see my head, <laughs> face. I'm like, um, okay. So the card's at 6,100 attack. Let me just walk you through what Wake Up Your Elemental Hero does. It gets 300 attack for each material used for its fusion summon. And it gets uh, an attack for each fusion monster used for its uh, fusion summon. I've used one fusion monster, which means it has one attack. <clears throat> um... So it's 61 into the Camellus's 14, right? And that's 61. Because after it attacks, it burns the opponent for the amount of attack that the monster had. That puts him at 19. Then I go DPE, pop the Mole Cricket, and 
The wake up for Stratos. Oh, that's still lethal. All right. You know what? Actually, he was right and I was wrong. He was he was completely dead there. Uh, I just hadn't figured out the line in my head. All right. Well, uh, you know what they say. Uh, <laughs> mm, oh, yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> I mean, 20,000 attacks, they're going to be there. And, uh, and But but Marcello's like, he's attacking 15 times. It's like, no, that's not how it works. It's, I wish Joseph, that was how it works. Uh, wow. Oh, Camillus is reduced by DPE. You're right. Wait, that might have been... Wait, that's crazy. Takes it with the wake up, your elemental hero. Anyway, um, so then we go to game two, and this one's kind of funny. I open exactly everything to beat the board. Uh, but then the only starter I have in my hand is Fusion Destiny, and he has Ash, and I'm like, all right, let's go next. And then the third game is frustrating because, like, they spend the whole time talking about fucking Nibiru. They're like, oh, if he has Nibiru, it's over. Let me tell you right now, I got nibiru like, four times over this event. I won every single game that Nibiru was a part of. Every single game. Why? Because the deck pluses off of Nibiru now. You have to be able to activate it at a very particular time into a very particular and telegraphed hand to actually get any. Real quick, I will tell you, if you are playing against Hero and you have a Nibiru, you should Nibiru when they go to Polymerize for the DP, all right? Now, if they have added or drawn the uh, Plasma, then you're fucked. But, you know, it is what it is. I'm not sure if it's a one card combo, but I mean, simply Hero Lives is definitely. Oh, uh, also, game one, I drew increase. You can see it in the opener. It's just one of those hands. A lot for this deck. Yeah. I mean, back in uh, the Greek Championship, I mentioned, of course, Predoplant Anaconda was there. Yeah. So you used the force to. And we have. Send around the Gpros. Go in. And now Hero. So, uh, anyway, uh, this one is not fun. Uh, what ends up happening here is I go Rivalry, a pointer. Uh, anti-spell. Now, I want to talk real quickly about this sequence that they talk about for like four minutes. Oh boy. They know all the back row. Rivalry, a pointer, anti-spell. What do you think is the correct order for these trap cards? What or do you think is the correct order? For Fragrance and Lotus. Do you think it's better to use one before the other? Do you think maybe uh, anti-spell, resolve, is that okay? And then resolution, I will a go pointer? For, I will go for that. Yeah. yeah. All three of them say Go anti-spell, resolve, is that okay? Then after that, a pointer. Could not disagree with this line more. You are fiending for runic destruction out of the hand. If they have a bunch of quick plays, it doesn't matter. They're going to chain them in an anti-spell regardless. They're going to get to the same place, which is fucking nowhere. What you are scouting for is the card that beats Anti-Spell the in-archetype Runic Destruction you know they play three of, right? Yeah. Just I feel like I'm going crazy. Response. In that position, it requires them to have the read that you have an Anti-Spell set, and then win a 50-50. So there, and then activating the Lotus, yeah. This isn't during the draw phase, is it? Or, or no, no, we are still in the... We're still, yeah. we're still going for this, okay. Yeah. And we're gonna get Dark Law. Yeah. They, they don't know this line. Uh, uh, it's fine. It's a very new line. But, um, <clears throat> no, yeah, th but they talk about this for like five minutes. They're like, oh, I wish he had. Oh, I wish. Oh, I wish he had. I wish, uh, no. Oh, my God. Anyway. Uh, but this hand was a brick anyway. I feel really bad for him. It absolutely had to fucking resolve um, Fountain or die into this hand. Th this, this one is... And uh, we got to see, this is what Pac was telling me. He was like, if you can get the game state to a point where you've resolved anti-spell and you have a DP on the field, you physically cannot lose. Nothing in the game can beat you. I'm sure he'll shout. Let me see if I... If you uh, Marcello is correct here also. He talks about how um, if I am waiting on the anti-spell, I wait for them to commit to the Hugan so they pitch slumbers because they have double slumber. I suppose. Opener. And then I play the next turn in the way that I do, firstly, because I'm a little pressed for time, and secondly, because slumber's also a negate In attack. response to the... Uh, the really, so they just want this <laughs> redonta. <laughs> okay. But I do not. Please. <laughs> Please. <laughs> Please. <laughs> Please. <laughs> and then they go... They go. And Joseph is activating the Destroy Phoenix Enforcer. Destroys all the cards that activate next turn. When you combine it with a card like Destroy Phoenix Enforcer, yeah. it can pop the cards that you set that you're trying to wait for. It's checkmate, essentially. And, yeah, it looks like we're going into the end phase, and Joseph is active. It's checkmate, essentially. Pull up checkmate! <laughs> Funny. 
anyway, it was a lot of fun. My opponent was um, was cool. Um, oh, I do want to also say, chat was like, I, I watched back. Chat was like really railing this guy for like slow playing. They were like, oh, he was playing so slow. I don't, I do not agree with that at all. While I was in this game, I felt like he was playing at a reasonable pace. This is a complicated deck, and it plays over the course of several turns. I was prepared to scoop game two super early because that's just runic. Like, my fucking god. Let the man play in a high-stress situation chat. Lord! Uh, okay, but it was nice. It was very happy. I'm very happy that I... um. That I was able to win. I didn't say Bussy in the post match interview. You know, work with me again, Konami. I gotta tell you, you're you I will literally talk about this deck for years. I will make people buy Maze of Memories. You all are all gonna go, wow, that's crazy. Maze of Memories. I will purchase that today. Um <clears throat> Yeah. Uh so I, I I'm hanging around to day two. We're or day one. We're chilling. And then all of a sudden this this like homeless like drifter ambles up to me and I'm like, all right, whatever. And then I take a second look and I go, oh shit, that's Siberian. <laughs> so Siberian like came by legend. and Siberian, the thing you got to know about Siberian is that they, uh, are, were cursed by an ancient genie um, and the ancient genie uh, said you will never have an acceptable travel experience as long as you live they had to like uh, get on a gondola and then like swim the channel it was disastrous um, but I will say Siberian kind of had drip Siberian kind of had drip. They were the dripped out per most dripped out person we spoke with all week. And I'll tell you this as well. They were a delight to be around. They were so much fucking fun. It was, I was so happy that Siberian tagged along for stuff. They were a blast to be around. I'm so glad I finally got That's to meet them in person. Oh, what a, what a delight. What a delight. We were all cracking up at, uh, me, Rebecca, Steb, Jillian, Haley, Siberian, uh, all went out for pizza after day one, and Siberian is looking at the uh, the pizza place's menu and just getting mad. And they're like, "I cannot believe it! I cannot believe it! They oh, they do not know anything!" And we're like, "What are you talking about?" And they're like, "Look at this!" And they point to um the name of the thing, which is like penne a la vodka or something. And they go, the way they have spelled penne here, penne is the pasta. Penne is penis. They want the penis a la vodka. And we just, we're just cracking up. And, and they, but they had good food, but they, the, but the food was really good. And when Siberian ate the food, they were like, I cannot believe it. I was so mad at this place. Why is the food so good? And it's written so badly. It was so funny. Ah, <laughs> oh, they were, they were, they were a delight there was there was uh we when we were all getting dinner Haley was like hey i just want to say this is really nice to hang out with everyone and i was just like thank you for saying that that perfectly encapsulates my feelings i'm having a wonderful wonderful time with my friends it was very enjoyable anyway <clears throat> so some fun stuff from rounds um sprite misread uh i fucked up uh, what sprite build was going to be playable, as you all know. Um, round four, I play against Runic for hire. That's right. My opponent goes uh, Fossil Dig. And I go, Fossil Dig? What is this, Dinomorphia? What do you duelist be? And they go, grab Rex. And I go, okay. That deck was not very good. Uh, I did win, uh, but they drew like a lot of cards, right? Um, there, I, I think I got top four, but we'll never get that guy's list. That guy's super secretive with his list. In fact, I was looking for the list earlier today and found a video of someone trying to reverse engineer the list, which was very funny. Um, <clears throat> while we were at that pizza place, one of my friends was inside the restaurant and messaged me, haha, you are outside and we are inside. That's Fuck like off. Legend. Um, what else? 
Uh, oh, in the feature, game one, I open increase. Uh, yeah. Um, anyway, so right That's before like uh, the I rounds imagine. end that day, um, every one of my friends has dropped. Uh, Siberian didn't even play, <laughs> but every one of my friends has dropped. Um, and my last round, who am I sitting next to but Haley? Right? Like, she is right next to me. And I'm like, oh, thank God, you know, we weren't matched up. She's on Math Mac. And I I, uh, I hear her kind of, uh, something goes wrong and she loses game one while I'm, like, doing my combo. And so I'm like, we're finishing our game. We finish it as they start their next game. And she goes, uh, you can start. And I go, huh? And I, I after, I'm like, are you on some crazy shit? Like, are you like main decking Lava Golem? That's like super cool. You were like, oh, I'll throw them off by making them go first. And she goes, no. So I got real tired. And I don't know what got into me, but I lost the game and boarded for going first. And I just said, you go first. And as soon as it escaped in my mouth, I went, no, that's not right. But I'd said it. I couldn't unsay it. So I had this handful of fucking floodgates and shit. And my opponent's just comboing off into no interaction. And I'm like, yeah, I've done exactly that. I have done that exact thing. That is legitimately something that I've done. Um, otherwise, Haley would have uh, cleared to day two. But uh, as is, I went 7-2 day one. I did clear to day two. Unfortunately, 3,500 people, right? So uh, you had to go, uh, I think, X2-1 to clear. Um, and even then, some X2s, I think, weren't guaranteed at one point. And so I won my first game, and unfortunately, I lost my second. And I lost it to stuff that was just out of my fucking control. It was... Um, I opened two hands that needed a hero lives to resolve and my opponent ashed it. Like you usually don't ash a hero lives unless you have like some insane read that your opponent's grip is kind of mid. Uh, but they did it twice. The second time is defensible because it worked the first time. Uh, but they did it twice and just one. And I was like, well, whatever. And it was Sprite. It wasn't like a deck that I could like interact with, with non-engine and then get ahead of. They were just going to have like a negate and a half every turn. And it was just, um, it was unfortunate. Um, that was the closest I've been to topping yet. I, I that's that's my ultimate goal is to top a YCS. Um, but I was, uh, I was I was tantalizingly close. Um, but I can't be too mad about it because I didn't think I would be even remotely close. I was playing a dog shit deck for babies. Uh, I'm gonna say you know you all are not beating the free you allegations. Man on three hours of sleep shows up with a pet deck and goes seven two. You know, but um. I, I, I think that I will have the opportunity to do it at some point. I, uh, for the past couple of YCSs, I've cleared to day two. I've, um, the, I, I make it deeper in day two rounds every single time. So just got to make it happen. Uh, one more, one or two more times and we can clear. You are so lanky and Caucasian looking in this shot. Uh, well, the latter for sure. I wouldn't call myself lanky looking in this one. I'm a big boy. Uh, okay. So, um, once I know that I'm out, uh, me and, uh, uh, I jet, I get the fuck out of there. I sign some stuff for people and then I go goodbye and I leave. I'm so ready to explore London. So me and Siberian and Haley and, oh, one more thing about the event space. Um, so in America, um, let me see if I can pull this up. As you know, if you watched uh, my stream last week, you know that they were trying to host a bunch of different um, uh, Time Wizard events that were like other like 100 YCSs, like the 100th, the 150th, and the 200th um, that were historically bad formats. Well, unsurprisingly, uh, those did not fire particularly frequently. I think um, the 2018 one fired three total flights, uh, but... It was like three, four, and five. Um, far and away the most popular thing, even at the YCS that they designed it not to be the most popular thing, was um, was Edison. And it was popular to a degree that I just was not expecting. Check out this tweet from Jeff Jones. 107 Time Wizard April 2010 flights fired. That beats out every side event, including win a mat like people showed up to play edison and i will say this by the way um at uh the 250th in london all they did was edison they didn't even bother they were like 
Time Wizard, April 2010. Now, I'm going to tell you all this. I think we could get something really cool about this. Like, this is... a level of interest in a format that literally has never existed in Yu-Gi-Oh's history. A format that's not advanced. Um, I mean, more than the actual format that people are playing in Winamat. Uh, like, now is, more than ever, the time to be pushing for integration into Master Duel. I think it's a really easy sell for Konami. It's seeing fucking shit like this. Um... But also, let's try and get some product out of it, right? Obviously, the Time Wizard uh, mat is already geared to Edison, but let's try and like get an like an Edison collect. They wouldn't call it that; they'd call it like um, like a classic collection or something, historic collection. And it's like reprints of fun Edison stuff, maybe like alt rarities of like or uh, alt arts for like Drill Warrior and shit like that. Like um, it, it's kind of weird in that this is when. Wizards of the Coast would release a modern master set, but because Yu-Gi-Oh's reprint policy is so aggressive, there's no reason for them to do something analogous. So we have to just give them an incentive to do something similar, like a, a classic set that may, maybe like a pre-con that's like four Edison decks or like a like kind of like the commander decks, but they're like Edison ones, decks that theoretically you could build out to play advanced. Like Quick Draw Dandy it could be theoretically built out to Synchron and Junk Speeder. So I don't know. I think there is like, I think there's something there. And I think this is a number that Konami cannot ignore. This combined with the, um, the 250th in London, just not offering any, anything but April, 2010. It's pretty nice. It's pretty nice. Uh, shouts out to, um, Tengu Plane, which everyone told me people were going to jump on next. Uh, looks like it's doing great, folks. <laughs> no. Um, oof. 16 goats is not bad either, but... <clears throat> I do want to real quick make fun of the low, uh, low events. Um... Speed Duel constructed seven? Come on. There was a lot more, I will say, at uh, London. Speed Duel was very popular at London. Rivalry of Warlords, amazing. Uh, Duel Links, two events. Master Duel, five events. They had Master Duel at London, but it was just kiosks. And Danny was like, oh, are you hosting events? They were like, no, but you can play. He was like, oh, for tickets? And they go, no, for fun. He was like, why would I want to do that? <clears throat> No cross duel. What? Come on. I don't think they were hosting cross duel. What does rivalry entail? They give you a pre-con. Rivalry, by the way, if you've never played rivalry and you find yourself That's at a YCS, like give it a shot. Legend. Rivalry is one of the funnest experiences you can have playing Yu-Gi-Oh. It's, it's a blast. Uh, okay. So, um, uh, once I find out that I'm out day two, we get the fuck out of there. And, uh, I... You know, I go to go chill. Uh, I'm, I'm having fun with my friends. Um, me and Siberian and Haley and uh, Danny and Jillian, we all go to... Uh, look at this lovely picture of us all, by the way. Look at this just lovely picture. Um, we all go to Cheeky Nando's. Uh, and uh, then we went to uh, Camden Market afterwards because, you know, uh, I thought I'd never been. It turns out I had been, but the thing is so big that there were two, there were different sections I had just not seen. Um, anyway, we go to... Uh... <clears throat> we go to uh, Camden Market and uh, we find a candy store. Now, I love candy. I'm a big candy man. I'm a big boy. I love candy. Well, uh, Haley decides this is the best um, possible uh, time to debut her new character, which is 
the little German boy who watches MBT. And so she starts doing this voice that's like, oh, I'm a, he, she's like, she goes, oh, I am a, I'm, das ist ein little German boy. Oh, and I want a little autograph from MBT. Here's to my favorite. Oh my goodness, my favorite Yugi. Oh no, I've dropped my big lollipop. And so on the way to the candy store, we see outside the candy store a big bust of a German boy with a lollipop. And she goes, Oh, it is I, the little German boy. I need the. And she did this like maybe 40 times. And I was just like, I'm going to attack you. It was so annoying. Um, but I did get a lot of candy, so. Uh, and anyway, uh, we had, we had a great time. Uh, I go to bed. Oh, right. Oh, sorry. One more thing. Um, that night, uh, I finally get to have dinner with Farfa and I, it ends up ballooning into Farfa and friends and it's every person from the event and it's like a 40 person dinner and we're just like, having fun and you know having a good time that's where this picture of a uh, disease comes from we gave him the uh, the piaget conservation glasses um but it was a lot of fun so i go to bed and i wake up like at noon and i am fucked um i'm not i didn't we didn't really like drink like i'm not like hung over it's just like the pressure and, you know, doing all the shit. It all just sort of caught up with me. Doug is so drunk in that picture. No, he's just, he's doing a bit. <laughs> he's pointing. It's water. Anyway. um, No, we, uh, so I'm fucked. And I'm like, oh God, I don't know what to do. And then I look in my pouch and I see. Paracetamol. And I, I down some of that shit and I'm done in seconds. I'm like, this is the greatest fuck. Oh, I'm, I'm like, we're back. We're so fucking back. We are so fucking back. Oh my God. Um, <clears throat> Dude, it's literally just Tylenol. Why are you so obsessed? I'm an ibuprofen stan, okay? Uh, anyway, I downed some food and then Rebecca and Jillian and I went to London Tower let me pull up some pictures from that because I think Rebecca has posted some of them. Let's see what we've got here. Uh, Jillian had gone to London Tower earlier in the week while we were all playing Yu-Gi-Oh! And she was like, we should go back. It was so much fun. We should go back. And we did. Um, what the fuck? Why is Rebecca not showing up? Is her name something stupid like Reb? So like a reb right now. Yep, that's literally it. All right, here we go. Well, this is just a bunch of pictures of her, but uh, I'm in some of these. <laughs> uh, here we are at London Tower. There's just her. This is this is the uh, the M this is MBT and friends. <laughs> uh, this is us again. And okay. Be honest, chat. Do I look like the out of touch tourist dad to Rebecca's like, I just learned what hot topic is like seeing daughter. I'm getting a lot of yeses. I was trying to look like, and I was trying to communicate this to Jillian, like the CIA guy in a Hawaiian shirt that shows up in a small town to hear about the strange cryptid that seems to be you know, the talk of the town, but you know, I did something. You can also see that I got, uh, a Fanta, uh, and that's because we don't have the same flavor. Um, let me see if I can find one of me and Jillian. Hold up. Give me a sec. Annoying. Yeah, there's some in here. Um, 
Let me find a good one, though. I'm not beating the, the out-of-touch dad allegations. Check this out. Oh, these are so good. Uh, ugh. There we go. Uh... Here is me and Jillian. Here is Jillian in her little princess dress, basically. Uh, what else do we have? Oh, here's here's a nice picture of that, actually. There you go. <clears throat> then we walked the Tower of London or the uh, the London Bridge and the bridge that's not the London Bridge, but it's like by the London Bridge. I thought we got one of all three of us. I guess not. Maybe there's some that she hasn't uploaded yet. Um. Anyway, yeah, I'm a uh, I'm nine feet tall. So uh, this this Tower of London. Also not built for big boys. What the fuck is going on with this nation? This is the most manlet castle I've ever seen. Ceiling height, very good. That's because it was built for the Tartarians after the mud flood. Um, <clears throat> but um, all of the stairs, they can't handle anything above a size 7 shoe. Um, the The like spiral staircases can't fit an American's gut girth. It just, it, it, we, they actually had the, uh, the, uh, armor of King Henry VIII. He was like five, four. That's why you're it's unbelievable. Legend. Um, so I'm like walking around like, geez, what is going on? And it doesn't help that I'm flanked by like the five, six wife and the five, five Rebecca. And finally, um, I see another big boy and I'm like, oh, thank God. Another big boy. And I'm like, hey, and I go to look. His shirt says Brooklyn. He's a fucking American tourist. And I look at him and we just go, just like, man, are you kidding me? This fucking sucks, dog. Ugh. Um, we, uh, we go to the, uh, we go to the Tower Bridge. We go to the London Bridge. Um, while we're at the uh, the London Tower, um, Rebecca and I see a mannequin of a, an elephant that was king, one of the kings. They got gifted an elephant, and it says, this elephant liked to eat red wine and hay, or was fed red wine and hay uh, as, you know, a joke, because they were all cared for very poorly. Um, careful of big poos, that's what it said, careful of big poos. We watch this little kid, maybe 10 years old, come up and he sounds out the words. He goes, Mom, this elephant drank red wine. And she goes, oh, that's great. And then he gets in a little closer and he goes, Poos! And he runs off screen. He says, Poos! Big Poos! Poo! And I'm just cracking up. I'm like, we, Rebecca and I are like pissing our pants. This kid is, Poos! It was Peeps. <clears throat> anyway, after we uh, force Rebecca, who can't walk more than uh, 30 feet without her body crumpling into dust, to walk 10 miles, uh, we say goodbye to her and uh, we go meet um, uh, Georgie, is one of our friends uh, that we met through Alex, uh, for dinner. We had a wonderful dinner at a nice little restaurant. Uh, we had It was great food. Jillian wanted to go to a pub and get a steak and ale pie before she went and we were able to do it. Um, then we go back to the place and, um, then, uh, day five, we basically just got up and went, got up and go, uh, another banger of a United flight, by the way, I had to put together this like presentation for one of my, uh, law school classes. And so I was like, boy, I hope the, uh, the thing works. And before we get on, I'm like, Hey, I have to put through a presentation. So I purchased, you know, the power thing. Is the power going to work? Saying all I can to prove reliance in what will eventually be a contract action. I'm just kidding. Or am I united? Uh, and they go, yes, it will. So I I get in there. 
and I go, I plug it in and it's not working. And I go, Hey, it's not working. They go, Oh, it'll start working during takeoff. And I said, will it? And they said, yes, take off. I go, it's not working. They go, Oh, Hmm. Let's check it. They look around and they go, Ooh, actually this whole part of the plane, the power's out. And I go, okay, well, it's not a full flight. You can move me. And they go, Hmm. They look around, they go, actually the whole plane is out. And I go, well, that's not good. They go, yeah, let's try tripping the circuit breaker. And they do. And they go, nope, it didn't fix it. And I go, hmm. So what are we going to do? And she's like, I don't know what to tell you. I'm like, oh, that's great. I'm like, but I really need the power. She's like, ah, I don't know. I mean, I don't know what we can do. There should be a law where if a flight isn't full, some people in economy should just go to first class. I don't understand how they have like four working seats in the entire plane and they all cost $5,000. And in an, in a scenario like this, where someone really desperately needs power on an eight hour flight, they can just go, eh, fuck it. You didn't pay the money. That seat has to remain empty. It sucks. You should, you should get bumped up. That's not fair. Oh, well. And let the plebeians up front. Yeah, I guess. Uh, but, well, you know, then we got home. We got home real late last night. But jet lag worked for me. Jet lag usually works against you, of course. It worked for me because I went to bed at what was 10 p.m. here, but 2 a.m. there and woke up at what was 6 a.m. here, but 10 a.m. there. I was like, damn, I'm on time. That's crazy. <clears throat> um, I'll just go through my Twitter real quick and hit everything that I missed. Um, this is my list. A lot of people were asking for it. We recorded a deck profile that may still go up on MBT Clips at some point, but... um. Uh, it's just rambling and it's low quality and it's just it doesn't really fit my channel anymore. So I just I just posted it. Um, this is what I played. Uh, it's on my Twitter. Um, this is me getting back. And this is just stuff that I was retweeting today. <clears throat> um, this is uh, Fair Olymp for Celtic Guardian format. Oh, uh, I'll show you a little nifty little gadget I got. Or maybe I won't because I don't know where it is in my shit. But they were selling gold Celtic Guardians. So Danny and I bought one. And so we have the Celtic Guardian badge now. The official Celtic Guardian badge. Um, Siberian says, I would also like to mention my Skyhawk episode. Uh, where after five hours of us bouncing around one another and joking, he goes, So where do I know you from? That was, I will say, that's the thing. Uh, I didn't know you at the start because look at Siberian in this let me go back to the picture of all of us they look so normal I have seen pictures of Siberian in the past and they had like an Alan Moore beard the sunken eyes of like a 90 year old trawler That's captain you're a legend. but it was the voice the voice gave it away for me Oh, we took this picture too. This was great. Uh, but like I was so happy legend. to meet every... Oh, yeah. Um, I guess I'll wrap it with this. Um, oh, yeah. Cursed Eyes was uh, there as well. I'll, real quick. Oh, it didn't work. Maybe this isn't real. Maybe this isn't real. Got it. Let's talk real quick about Cursed Eyes. Cursed Eyes was there. Day one, they had me sign a field center. Day two, they came up and revealed that they had lost their entire binder. So day three, we put together a binder. But check this out. About the thing I witnessed in the background of my Edison game at a YCS where I watched this emo twink complete a trade for some sort of ghost rare synchro card and then immediately eat and swallow it. I'm so upset. Crush it. <laughs> you can't crush. And you're completely fine with it. Genuinely? Good. Nothing happened. 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 N
Nothing happens. Yu Gi Oh! <laughs> Nothing happens. It isn't a magic trick. They really ate it. That was the trade. Will you eat the burrito? <laughs> anyway, that's the most normal Yu-Gi-Oh fan. Anyway, it was a lot of fun. Thank you to everyone I got to see. I, I'm so glad I got to see everyone there. Um, you know, I don't know when I'm next going to be in uh, outside of the United States. It was It was incredible to be able to... Uh, share that experience with everyone um the uh, finals i was incredible um uh, the same thing that happened day one with side events happened day three and a bunch of people got uh, free stuff but who cares um the power went out for like 13 seconds that was really funny uh yeah i just want to say uh thank you to everyone who came back uh, out i i know that i was like overwhelmed and like especially towards the end of some days i probably seemed really tired of signing stuff um but uh i i never get tired of that shit i i really do appreciate everyone coming out and um you know without all of you i i wouldn't be able to do this so it it, it is it is really magical to be able to experience something like this with everyone and i uh, thank you to everyone who made you know this trip out so special um uh, let's do uh let's do saga